What's going on, everybody? It is your humble YouTube host, Tim, back with another live stream. And today I wanted to talk about introverts, okay? And uh, the topic for this stream came from a comment that I that I got in, one of my, uh, in the comment section on one of my videos. Um, everyone knows I'm an introvert. I make a lot of co uh, content for introverts. And someone in the comment section once has said, the age of introverts has begun. And I thought this was interesting. And I was, you know, I checked my YouTube comments like early in the morning. So I, I was laying in bed and I just kind of, as I do with a lot of comments I get, cause I really appreciate all the comments, all the engagement. But I just start, started thinking, I'm like, are we entering the age of introverts? <clears throat> you know, maybe it's cause I'm older. Maybe it's cause I pay more attention. Maybe it's cause I identify as an introvert. But I'm like, I feel like I didn't hear people talking about being introverts as much back in the 80s and 90s, even the early 2000s. You know, it just didn't seem like you heard it that much. Whereas now so many people identify as introverts. I think it's almost cool. Almost. It's almost cool to be an introvert. So I'm like, are we entering the age of introverts? And then I also ask myself, like, if so, is that a good or bad thing? <laughs> so I figured we could talk about it. I know a lot of people who uh, follow the channel, uh, who are part of the community, part of the YouTube fam here, uh, identify as introverts. We got a lot of extroverts too, and they're welcome to weigh in, but I want to talk about it. Are we entering the age of introverts, introversion? If so, why? Like what, like what brought it on? And is it a good thing? So come on in, wipe your feet, leave the door open so someone else can come in behind you. Uh, if you're so inclined, you, you can hit the like button. If you're liking what, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, I think that that kind of stimulates, ooh, stimulates the algorithm to let more people come in. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about introversion. You know, so I'm definitely gonna be looking over at, at the at the comment section. So if you wanna chime in, already seeing some people, great T news that I'm definitely an introvert. You know, already got some people already coming through. Uh, Andrew said, I think it's because society is getting crazier. People rather not deal with people as much, plus technology, social media, et cetera. Okay, I, I get that. Yeah, I can see that being a big part of it. If it just seems like the outside world, people especially, is getting crazier, getting scarier, it's easier to just want to like stay in the house by yourself. And social media, you know, being able to, you know, the, I'm like before, even if you wanted to hide out in the house, you had to be around the TV, which I know these days, you know, everyone who has it, you know, there's TVs in every room now, but there was a time the TV was in the living room. You know what I mean? The TV was a family affair. The radio was a family affair in the past. As our entertainment has become more of an individual affair, and especially now we're like, you can watch anything you want to watch on your phone, which is purely yours. I think that plays a part in it too, because like, now I can totally hide out by myself in my room and I, I can have access to everything that everybody else has access to. Not to mention, I don't even have to go get groceries or go get food if I don't want to. I, for example, yesterday, I, I did not leave this hotel room. Yesterday, I did not leave the hotel room. I got coffee from the hotel coffee and I ordered DoorDash. I did not leave at all. There was a time, I mean, if you had food stuff in the house, you could always do that. But I mean, like now, even, you know, a bachelor like me who doesn't cook, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't need to leave the house for anything. You can get it delivered. So I think that plays a, a big, a big part in that. Yeah. It's just like, as more people are just like, man, I ain't trying to deal with people. Like you don't have to deal with people. You can deal with people through social media and you don't have to talk to anybody. You can just, you know, you can be very selective about who you run into on social media, you know? Yeah, uh, dying to live journal. That alone time is very important for introverts. Um, we need to recharge. But why does it seem that now more and more people feel that way? You know, I almost never heard anybody say that. Maybe because I was younger, but I never really heard anybody say that before. You know, just like, yeah, I need to. Now, everybody, you know, so many people. Or maybe it's just I'm attracting more introverts. Let's talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about these things. 
Jasmine said, when the world goes mad, it's important to find stillness within. I'm a total introvert. I can be extroverted if the situation demands it, but I usually steer clear of such situations. <laughs> that is the most introverted sentence ever. I can be an extrovert if I have to, but I typically try not to ever be in a situation where I have to. Um, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like, like if you if you know me simply from work, you probably wouldn't think I'm an introvert because at work, it's been, like if I'm in a leadership role, I'm around and I'm talking to everybody because like that's what I have to do as a, as a manager, as a supervisor. I got to be around talking to everybody. But when I'm just like a housekeeper, no one ever sees me because I clean my rooms. I go home. You know what I mean? So like I can do it when I need to do it. And I do enjoy. I enjoy that. That's one of the things I enjoy about being a, a leader is I get to talk to everybody on the team. You know, when you when you're when you're not a leader, you talk to people too much. They like get back to work. But like when you, when that's part of your job, I enjoy that. But come five thirty or come four thirty, as soon as the day's over, it's done. You know what I mean? Like I just gets cut off. Like I ain't trying to see nobody. Uh, I just want to be in my room. I need to recharge. Or I'm only trying to see a very select few people. You know, like my friends. And even that, you know, that might only be twice a week. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Jesse said, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm an introvert out of necessity. Interesting. Um, was Jesus an introvert? Just asking. Just asking. We can talk about it. Uh, tremendous sax. I do not. <laughs> I see what you did there with the name. I do not cook. No. Uh, I, I do think 2020 and the events surrounding it made introversion more acceptable. Uh, that's a good point. I think it a scared a lot of us into being scared to be around people and some people a lot of us probably still have ptsd from that that we don't even know unresolved the trauma from that and yeah i mean it became a thing you know a lot of people had never done it before and when they were forced to do it i think maybe a lot of people were like oh i kind of like this i can do this <laughs> Tennessee said, "Coworkers, says, what are you doing for lunch? Going to my vehicle, getting a moment, uh, uh, getting a moment to my thoughts. Exactly, exactly. I've been known to do that. Go, go, go sit in the car. I'll go, to, go down to McDonald's, grab some food, sit in the car and eat in the parking lot. And I can't stand when someone walks up on me. I'll be like, leave me alone. Like, even if when I finish lunch, I'm going to go hang out and talk to that person. I'm like, for these 30, 45 minutes I have for lunch, I don't want to see y'all respectfully. Uh, we're friends, but right now I just want to sit in my car and, and, and watch whatever I'm watching or do whatever I'm doing. I don't want to talk to nobody right now. <laughs> Let me slip this up a little more comfortable. Get to your car, drives away. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but like you'd have to be home to slip into something more comfortable. So you're driving away from your own place. That's very introverted. Uh, designer guy, I was a good student in school, a little off topic, but I was a good student in school until I realized I didn't need to be. So up until about ninth grade, it was very important that I make good grades because, and I'm, I'm happy about this. Mom was big on like making good grades, but I was always pretty smart. So like it wasn't hard, but once I got to like ninth grade and I figured out I didn't want to get the regular diploma. I didn't want to get the advanced academic diploma. I just wanted to get the middle diploma. I realized I didn't have to be a great student to do that. So I did just enough work to get the diploma I wanted. And since it wasn't just the regular one, mom could say nothing. I was like, I'm getting the halfway, you know, whatever. So then I became a just do what I had to do to get what I wanted student. So I routinely scored 70s in classes where I just wouldn't do assignments. I would only do the test. You know, like, I, yeah, so I, be, I became a average student because I wanted to, because I was like, what's the, I wasn't going to college. So I'm like, and I still ended up getting a Hope Scholarship. I still ended up getting a Hope Scholarship in Georgia. And I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't even trying. This has nothing to do with being an introvert. It's a great story, though. If, if in my, I may say so myself, I still got the Hope Scholarship down in Georgia. I wasn't even trying. So yeah, I guess I was a good student. Uh, Dying to lift said, feels like the world's moving too fast sometimes, too much stimulation. I agree with that. Plus the ways the world can be wicked, keep a smaller circle. I think a lot of people echo that sentiment of like, just keeping a smaller circle. 
because that's where I'm at with it. You know, when I'm out and about, I'm friendly. I speak to people. I, you know, I was talking to the, I went down to the, I'm in Portland. So even at the grocery store, they got like armed security. Um, and the, <laughs> the security guard came up behind me at the deli. I was getting me a little fried chicken. I, actually, no, I got baked chicken today. I was good. I got baked chicken. So the security guard came up behind me. Uh, and then he was like, excuse me, sir. So I turned around, but I was blocking the sushi guy's cart. You know, the guy with the, who makes a sushi had a cart. He kept, anyway, so I was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I'm just in everybody's way. And me and him started talking and it was cool. You know, we started talking and, you know, had a little conversation when I'm out and about. Then I went and got a little Starbucks. I, you know, I was asking the girl down there questions. I, I'm friendly. I talk, but as soon as that's over, I'm done. And I don't mind a little light conversation, but I'm really not trying to make no new friends. You know what I mean? I don't mind making acquaintances around town, but like when it comes to new friends, I keep a very small circle. Yeah. Brandon, good question. How's your daily life as an introvert? For me, it's difficult. Um, I haven't been in like a real relationship in over a decade. Uh, you know, I've had some situation chips or whatever. I could date, but my friend circle is small and my dating circle is even smaller. So I'm very particular about who I date. And in lieu of finding like exactly what I'm looking for, we can hang out, you know, but I'm, we're not going to date. And I want whoever I end up dating, I want her to it to be the same. I want to be what she's looking for. Um, and it, you know, there's lots of women who've been like, yeah, we can hang out, but you know, it's it, me and her, we're on the same page. Like we're both fun. We both attractive. We can kick it, but this isn't the long term I'm looking for. And I think that's okay. Um, but I do think, and as an introvert, you have to find someone who's willing to put up with your introversion, you know? So I, but I know a lot of extroverts who are having trouble dating now too. So I don't know. I don't know. Jay Craig said, I'm entering the age of introvert. I don't know about the rest of y'all. <laughs> That's a very introvert thing to say. Actually putting we in the title turns off introverts. Like, mm -mm, it's the I. Mm -hmm. Kaylin said, I would love to interact with people more, but it becomes exhausting having most people have a conversation with themselves out loud with you. <laughs> I like that. There are people not like that, but they're minority. So basically you're saying like, and I, I get you, people are, when people talk to you, they're basically having a conversation with themselves. They're basically trying to tell you what they want to tell you, you know? And while you're talking, they're formulating what they're going to say. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're actually interested in what you're saying. It's them just wanting to talk and you're there. So you're, you're going to get these words. <laughs> you go get these words. Uh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Thank you, Angela. And good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Angela, our, our faithful moderator. Thank you. Adele, yeah, after, after five o'clock, you done. You done looking for talent. <laughs> you done. Just you. Got to reset. Oh, where's that? Diane, I'm in Portland. Um, Meow, I, I think, I don't know, if you're an introvert, I think introversion helps you get through life, but I don't think it's something you pick up like yoga. You know what I mean? Like if you're an extrovert, I think that's what work, works best for you. I don't think you should try to make yourself an introvert. You know, I, I think it's just a matter of knowing who you are. Um. But yeah, if you're just a natural an introvert, extrovert, excuse me, I don't think you should try to be an introvert because it's, it's not going to work. But if you're an extrovert, I mean, so if you're an introvert, I'm getting confused. My ends of axis. If you're an introvert, I think that's works best for you getting through life. New Endeavor said introvert here and loving it. Okay. I, I don't think 64 that introverts are more connected to earth. Um spiritually more than that. No, I, I don't think spirituality and connection to earth has to do with introversion or extroversion. Um, I just think extroverts might connect differently. You know what I mean? Like for us introverts, it might be long solo for me, say long solo hikes by myself. That's how I get connected. 
an extrovert might want to hang out in a park with her friends and play volleyball barefoot in the grass. You know what I mean? So they might just connect differently, but I don't think spirituality is based on whether you're an introvert or extrovert. Cause like that wouldn't be fair. You know, like why would the earth do that? You know what I mean? Like I think we all connect if we're, if we want, uh, we all connect to nature, to the earth, spirituality, God in our own way. Um, and I, I don't think anyone can judge more connectivity or less. Um, Cause how would you ever know? My opinion. Hey, we got a super chat down here. I'm way behind these comments. Over here. Hey, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much. Super chat squad. Say to them, hey, introvert fam. I'm so loving this topic. Yes. Let's talk about it. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. I appreciate the continued support. Thank you so much. We here. I'm way behind these comments, but these are good. We're getting good. We get good topics. Thank you so much, Natasha. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Where we at? Where we at? Hey, Corey Cummins. London in the building. Okay. Okay. Deep Verma says we're entering the age of truth in the end of the old world. Okay. Okay. Respect. Respect. Appreciate that answer. Designer guy said, I put earbuds in my ear to talk to myself and not look weird. <laughs> So, so the talking to yourself is real. Like you legit like talking, like mouthing it. Okay. I'm not going to front. I do that sometimes too. I do it a lot in the house and sometimes I'll be out and about somewhere and it'll just happen. I'll be like, yeah, but do we? And then I'm like, oh, snap. I'm, I'm in Publix. Okay. In public and Publix. Um, yeah, sometimes. Uh, Poppy, I do not have any other real, real side hustles other than, you know, the internets and when I work, um, I dabble, you know, I dabble in some other little situations, but I, I don't call it side hustle, a side, a legit side hustle, unless I'm actually making some consistent money. So no, nah, I don't have any other side hustles. You know, we do a little, a little other stuff, you know, legal, you know, we got a little crypto, uh, real estate. I'm just not really into do I have anything in the stock market right now? I don't think I got any stocks right now. Do I? No, I don't think I have anything in the stock market. I'm, I'm feeling like I do. I'm feeling like recently I was like, oh, yeah, I still got so-and-so. But I can't remember. Yeah, I do. Actually, I do. I do. Okay, both. Yeah, I got, I got a little money in the stock market. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew I did. I just could I had to think of the account. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, that kind of stuff is... I, I dibble and dabble for later. You know what I mean? I'm wondering if like in my fifties, I'm not really going to get into like investing and stuff like that. That's the plan at least. So, but currently no, nah, I wouldn't say I have any legit side hustles. I uh, don't live in a car. Uh, no. Okay. channel. Do I think owning a service-based business will be difficult for an introvert? Um, I would say this J Craig if you're question, if you are an introvert and you're thinking about starting a service-based business and you're questioning, where did your question go? Hold on. Why can I not see it anymore? Anyway, if you're questioning it, then maybe it won't work for you. You know what I'm saying? If you're an introvert and you're like, well, I want to do this business, but you're not sure if you can do it, then it might not work for you. Because like, you know, a couple, like I just said, a couple of the people said it, a lot of introverts can, when it comes to business, be extroverted if they need to. But if you're not sure you can do it, you know what I mean? Like maybe that, maybe a service-based business isn't for you, which is the good news is there's a million non-service-based businesses, you know? Wow, I lost my place in the comments. Spencer said, I have a hard time meeting new people. People around my age typically smoke and drink. Don't find me entertaining because I like to stay home, not do crazy things. I mean, yeah, like it, it's if you stay home a lot, 
it is going to be harder to meet people. Now, I, my only advice would be, and I'm trying to work on this too, whatever hobbies you do have, when you do go out in public, try to do them with other people. You know what I mean? Um, if you're trying to meet people, when you do leave the house, you got to make sure you, whatever you do, maybe do it with other people. Because if you're always home by yourself, and then when you go out, you're always by yourself, where are you going to meet people? So I think this is where we struggle. It's like, okay, I'm an introvert. And I like my alone time, but it'd be nice to meet some new friends. But then we have to be proactive and like, okay, when I, instead of going to the library to get a book, maybe go to the bookstore, might bump into somebody, you know, maybe get a book and go to the coffee shop and see if anybody, you know what I mean? Like try to creatively find things to do when you are at the house where you might bump into someone else who likes to do the things you like to do. Because that's how we meet people. We meet people at work. Excuse me. We meet people at work. We meet people through friends or we meet people through activities that we all like to do. Like most of my friends when I was in my 20s, I met party. Like all of them, you know, met, I, met, I met one friend because I worked for her stepdad. And then I met other people when we started all partying. I come out to hang over and party. I meet this person. Then we go out to this party. I mean, like all my friends are about to party because that's what I did. So I'm going to have to try to learn now if I want to make more friends, how to do that non-partying with the, the hobbies I have now, you know. Praveen connects into the earth through the walks. Nice, nice. I got to dip down here. Praveen came through. So guess what? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Praveen, for the continued support. It's a great to see you, Tim. Good to see you, too. Always glad to see you live streaming and join very early today. Yeah, you did. Would you all work today? You joined early today, Praveen. You, 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 you're not down there at the Wakemans? Thank you, Praveen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. People becoming more self-absorbed. Absorbed. I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. It's funny. We've never been more self-absorbed, but I feel like never worked, never done as, as little self-work. Even though we talk about it a lot, I think we're, we're very caught up in ourselves, but also everybody's just like everybody else, you know? We got a lot of self-centered clones in the world, you know. Oh, this is where I was at. Okay. Oh, Miracle, you're an only child. You're an introvert. Didn't know it because you were raised by an extremely extroverted mom that forced you into uncomfortable social situations. Oh, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. One through three, I appreciate you asking people to hit the like button. Thank you. I always forget. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. We're gonna. Okay. Wait, let's keep it somewhat sane. Um, I shouldn't say that. I respect people's opinions. I I still deleted the comment. Um, all caps is too much. Side note: if 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 you put your comment in all caps and it's saying something slightly crazy, it's probably gonna get removed. Okay. Natasha loves being an introvert, find yourself being very observing of people in my surroundings. Same, same. You know, maybe that is an introvert trait is like being people watchers. Like I like being around people and like watching people. Like if, if I would be out in public every day if I was invisible. If I could be out but not be seen, ooh, I'd love it. I'd be everywhere. I would just, I'd be everywhere. I just don't like being seen and being interacted with sometimes, you know? Like I just want to sit and watch. I don't really want to be seen, you know, or be watched, you know. Jasmine, I'm going to go over to Powell's bookstore. I said that today. It's been cloudy and overcast and my mood has been a little, I haven't really, like on a sunny day, I'm trying to get get out, the hotel be out, you know what I mean? I'm like, why haven't I really been wanting to go anywhere? Like to, yesterday I didn't leave the hotel. Today, I went to the grocery store in Starbucks, came right back. Um, but I'm like, oh, it's been overcast and cloudy. It's supposed to be good weather soon. So I'm trying to get out. Powell's bookstore is on my list. Yeah, we're going to remove that one too. Nothing political. 
Ra, you you in Australia looking to get out, move to Mexico? Okay, okay, good luck, good luck. Yeah, Tina, you know how that is. When you drink, you make a lot of friends. You know, you got a ton of friends when you drink. Friends, you know, because you're always out and about. You're always in the mix. And, and there's nothing, for me, when I'm drunk, there's nothing I like better than seeing somebody I know. Oh, what up? Black, 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 give me a drink. You know? Oh, man. Sober, I'm like, mm, I ain't trying to talk to nobody. <laughs> uh, Calvin, um, I have definitely, and I've got a video that really goes into detail about that, but I've definitely been at my lowest point. Um, I, I, I would recommend watching that video. It, 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 that's so deep a question, I can't really get into it right now. Um, we're talking about introversion, some other stuff. I wouldn't want to attempt to answer that question in like two sentences and not do it justice. Um, but maybe another stream when we're really going down that road, uh, we can we can talk about that more. I will say, please hang in there. Please hang in there. It can get better. I have been there. It got better. Um, but yeah, I have a video about that that goes into a lot more detail about my struggle and how I came through the other side. Because it is possible to come through the other side. Bryson, um, I socialize on alcohol just by like talking to people. You know, I, I realized the alcohol and the drinks and the beer just made it easier for me to talk to people. I was still doing the talking. So anything I did drunk was still me. The alcohol just made it easier to do. Some a lot of times to my detriment, but like even the talking. I was like, oh man, when I'm drunk, I can talk to everybody. But it's this, it's me. The alcohol didn't put words in my mouth. It's me. So I just have to learn to sober, muster up the courage and the gumption to just walk up and talk to people. It's not easy, but that helped when I realized, oh, it is me. It wasn't the alcohol telling me what to say. It's always me. I just got to do it sober, you know. <laughs> He's letting that go, Angela. I feel you. I, I know you, 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 you watch it. Sometimes, yeah, when I'm behind in the comments, I come behind you and be like, Psh. What's up, Gary? Checking in from Vancouver. Uh, I don't know much about MBTI, Chad, because I don't, I refuse to do it. Um, I don't see the point. So, yeah, so I don't know much about it. Uh, Su Suho, I'm in, I'm in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Lil is a man-made introvert. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what up, Dar? Chad, you hanging in there? Glad to hear that. Glad you're hanging in there. Some some is all we can do. Oh, I got caught up in the chat. Nice. Hmm, I like that. Mike said in my occupation, when an incident happens, I always ask the introverts what happened because they are very observant. Mm, that's deep. That's deep. That's deep. And they're not going to bore you with like a super over the top description because they just trying to say what they got to say and be done with it. Let me tell you what happened. This is what happened. Boom, 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 done. Whereas some people be like, well, blah, 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 blah. you know, long winded, dramatic, naughty introvert just going to be like, this is what happened. Leave me alone. <laughs> this is exactly what happened right here. Two minutes later, they done. Got no time to be putting a lot of sugar on all of it and drawing it out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Why would Invisible Tim be a millionaire? I'm still curious about that. What could Invisible Tim? Mm, okay. I'm curious about that. Go oh, dark. Hope, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you recovered from the lower back surgery. Hopefully, it is your last one. Fourth, fourth time the charm. Um, that's a lot of surgeries. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully, that's your last one. Shane, you could could couldn't get that couldn't get that booch down that kombucha to acidic for your esophagus. You know, sorry to hear that kombucha is a great drink. Um, but hey, at least you tried it. At least you tried it. Andrew, I. I would imagine that the, the breakdown of the Western family probably leads to more introversion. That's a good point. Probably. 
places that the family culture is still alive and thriving, you probably don't get no loan time or, you know what I mean? But yeah, when, when, when you don't really have a lot of family to turn to, I think, yeah, it does make it easier to. Now, once again, I think some people, some of us are just naturally introverts, but I also think that the, I think you there's introverts and also like an introverted lifestyle. And I think a lot more people are living in an introverted lifestyle because of things like the breakdown of the family. Cause you know, like you said, like, if you're like, man, I just don't know anybody I want to kick it with or then you're going to keep to yourself. And like, if you're not spending a lot of time with family, like where you kind of feel like you have to, you know, engage sometimes like, yeah, you're just gonna be by yourself. My overall view on poverty tone, uh, I, I don't like it. I, I despise it. I wish we could stop being greedy and it could go away. Um, yeah. But I see what you're saying. I, I appreciate the little things. I'm with you on that. Definitely appreciate the little things. I don't, to me, that's not connected to poverty. It, you know what I mean? Poverty is poverty. And it, I hate it. You know what I mean? I just like it very, you know, it's just, I, you know what I mean? Um, I think any of us, even without poverty, we should learn to appreciate the little things. Just because I think the little things are the things that a lot of times mean the most. Um, yeah. yeah Fisky, I do think there are some extroverts who... And other people who might be in the ambiverts or whatever, who might think if you're just a pure introvert, yeah, they're better than you and something's wrong with you. They're allowed to have that opinion. Um, here's the thing. If, if someone has an opinion about us and it bothers us, that's because we low-key share that opinion. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm, I'm a hardcore introvert. I love it. You can say whatever you want about me. I don't care. I know you're wrong. There's nothing you can say about my introversion that's going to bother me because I know it's me and I embrace it and I love it. So like, yeah, that's why when people have stuff to say, like, I don't care. Like, I don't. Because I don't believe they're right. If I thought in the back of my mind they were right, I might feel bad about it. Oh, yeah, maybe. But like when I know you're you're wrong this is this is this is totally going off tangent and people are going to be mad at me about this but this is why like racists don't bother me i don't like racism but like racists don't bother me because i they're wrong <laughs> you, you you can say whatever you want about my race or me or what it does not bother me because i know you're wrong People have the right to their opinions. If, if, if I don't somehow agree with it at all, it doesn't bother me. Say what you want. Oh, introverts are slow. Okay, you know, okay. Yep, yep. Gonna get some comments about that one. Oh, uh, Jamie, yes, I worked at the Grand Canyon before. How you doing, Ted? Hey, one, two, three, official. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, that is love. Thank you. So thoughts on going back and accomplishing old goals you set even as a child? Like, say, collecting all the Chaos Emeralds inside of the Hedgehog 2. This is off topic, but let's talk about it. I think that is an excellent idea. I think that is an excellent idea, especially if you still remember that. Okay? Because we had a lot of ideals and goals when we were kids. We didn't totally forgot about. Totally forgot about it. If you were to dig up an old journal from when you were seven, you'd be like, oh, I said I was going to do that. But that one, you remember. I never got all the chaos in the loans. Do it. You know what I mean? Like that's that's life right there. This idea that we age out of certain goals or some things adults don't do is crazy. Like that's you. It's me. There's certain comic books I still want, bro. You know what I mean? There's certain things. Like I, I'm so happy they're bringing back the new X-Men cartoon. You know how happy I am about that? Because that was, that was a part of me. It was my childhood, which is an integral part of my life. I was watching the old X-Men in preparation of the new cartoon, like that type of, you ever notice how happy, look how, look how animated I got talking about childhood stuff. Now I am very mature, 
for middle-aged man. Um, I am very childish, I'll say. Uh, there's been famous podcasts that called me childish and a grown-up child man or whatever. But, <laughs> but like, that that's us. That's the type of stuff you do. Our childhood goals a lot of times were purely for the for the joy. You know, I just really like Sonic Hedgehog too, and I want to collect them. Nothing to it. You know those goals that if you tell anybody else about it, unless they're like a really nerdy like you, they're not going to get it. You can't tell nobody you did that. They're not going to who what what. How about you collect these bills and pay them? Like you know what I mean? But like it makes you happy. So I'm all for that. Find stuff you wanted to do as a child that you didn't get a chance to do or maybe you didn't have the money to do. Go back and do it. That's life, bro. Like, that's that's living. That's That that sounds fun, and I don't even know what it means. Um, great question. Thank you. Jefferson Manchild, Super Chat Squad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Got the hippos. I see you. Appreciate the love, the continued support. Thank you so much. Oh, Praveen sneaking in again. Uh, uh, Super Chat Squad. Thank you, Praveen. Said, I loved X-Men as a 10-year-old child. X -Men. Hey, hey, I was how old was I when X Men came out? I might have been a little older, but yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's still my jam. It's, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. KBC and someone else I forget said that being concise and introverted doesn't always go hand in glove. Okay, I take that back. I was I was going off of my own experiences. Respect, respect. I, I stand corrected. Amber Hurts in the building. Let's go. Mo, Mo says, I love being introvert. Let me enjoy my space. My peace, excuse me, and my space. Yeah, I do think it does seem like a lot of people get more introverted as they get older as well. <laughs> you never met anybody any more fun than your alone time? Uh, that's, that's, I, I personally have, I've met some people way more fun than my alone time, but <laughs> I met a few women, uh, that were way more fun than my alone time, but, uh, couldn't be with them all the time. <laughs> but they, were, they were so fun. It had to be short lived. Um, y'all been there, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, if you haven't met anyone more fun in your long time, wait till you do. Um, <laughs> mm, Mike Zero One Davis, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Super Chat Squad, thank you so much. X Men ninety seven has been great, Tim. Has the new has the new one started yet? Is the new X Men out? Is it out yet? But uh, yeah, yeah, bro, I'm so excited. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Appreciate the love, Supercat Squad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for, I'm here for all that. I'm here for the old one, the new one. I'm here for all. The, boy, that was a good cartoon. That theme song, bro. Like when I watch the old episodes, I let the theme song play, which is crazy. I don't even do that on Batman the Animated Series, and that's one of the best television shows ever created on God's earth. Um, so, but I, I skipped through the, you know, but on, on X-Men, I let it play. Yeah. The inner child, exactly. Ted critical to sense of play, joy, and creativity. We get grown, we get grown and then we cut that stuff out and we wonder why we're like bored. Do that stuff. I'm an EK. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Hey, I'm. I'm. I'm a free man. I'm a. I'm a grown, free child man out this month. <laughs> ah. Oh, thank you, Ben. Said you're closer to full Zen than almost any other streamer I've watched. Go. Uh, if I was really Zen, I'd be like, thank you. Um, and I really love the vibe you bring to your videos. Your open mindedness is. Uh, your open mindedness is full on. Much love. Hey, thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Thank you. That means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. That's love. That's love. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to never grow up. I'm trying to never grow up. 
Uh, Suho, it's it's by design that America is very hard to travel across without a car. I've ranted about this many times, but it, you can Google it. Uh, back in the 20s and 30s, a lot of the rubber companies and the automotive automobile companies bought up a lot of the tra public transportation and purposely destroyed it or ran it into the ground. So that's why we have some of the worst public transportation in the, in the, in the developed world. Um, it's by design. So, yeah. Yeah. John Scott, I do believe there are fake people, but I think there's real people, too. So, you know, they say real recognizes real. So I try to be a real person and the universe blesses me with, you know, running into some real people, you know, having real people in my life. So I just don't kick it with the fake people. I mean, but like fake people need other fake people to kick it with. So I can't be mad. There's fake people. They need fake people need friends. So. I just let them be fake together. Like it don't, they seem to get along to, you know, I, don't know, I just kick it with the real people. For me, you trying to walk across America? Okay, okay. Patrick's still trying to learn to freestyle a motocross at 26. I love the sport because of how far fetched it is in some people's heads. Yeah, it's totally real. Hey, go for it, Patrick. Go for it. Hold up, Lee. You're not, you're not going to be coming to me like that, Lee. I know where you live, Lee. Oh, it started on Disney Plus, Mike? Okay, okay. I'm going to have to. Okay. Now I got to get Disney Plus. Boy, just, these streaming services just don't stop. I got to. I got. Thank you for letting me know that, Mike. I got to. I got to tap in. And it's got the same theme song. I'll tell you, boy, if you don't think life is sweet, this is an example of. Bruh, you know. Angela likes the old episodes of Dave Attell's Insomniac. I remember I saw him somewhere recently, and I was like, I remember that guy. He used to be funny. He's probably still funny. But I was like, I remember that guy. Uh, Tyler, it air, all Airbnbs are different. So I don't know if I ever said a price before. Um, I mean, it's just, it's like with anything, you can get really cheap Airbnbs or you can get really expensive Airbnbs. So, yeah, just kind of depends on, on what, what, what you're looking for. Now that song's in my head. I have not seen the trailer for Monkey Man. Bargain Bear. Maybe if, if I if I see it, I'll take a look. Uh, 27 said, as an introvert, is sex worth it to be in a relationship with someone? I think if you're asking a question like that, then maybe if you have to ask, then the then you're probably not trying to be in a relationship with that person. Or you're not really ready to have a real relationship. Like if you have to be like, hmm. Is the sex going to be worth it? You know what I mean? Like, if you have to ask a question like that, yeah, you're probably not really feeling that person like that. Like, I know for me, like, if, if it's someone that I really want to be in a relationship in, you know, that's it's not even a question. It's like, man, I'm trying to, you know, get to know her better, you know. So, yeah, and, and, and sex is third or fourth or fifth down the line. So, like, yeah. Yeah, if, if, if for me, if I'm asking that question, then no, it's not. I'm not trying to be in a relationship with somebody just for sex because that's not fair to that person. Um, if if, if they're not trying to take it that far unless we're dating and I'm not trying to date, well, then it just doesn't go that far because, like, I'm not, I want nobody to be, you know, I'm not trying to wrong nobody for my own personal gratification. I'm not trying to break nobody's heart just so I can have sex personally, respectfully. Mon Monique B, yeah, introverts time to shine. Let's go. Wolverine and Deadpool. Eh, I haven't watched. I watched Deadpool one. I haven't watched the other ones. I'm, I, Deadpool's cool, but like it's not. Mm, I like hero heroes. You know what I mean? Men, you can definitely survive in the U.S. without owning 
a, 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 I don't want to say the word because I'll flag it. You can definitely survive. There are over, I promise you, 280, there's probably 99% of Americans don't have a weapon like that and they're okay. It's not, yeah, it's not the Wild West anymore, despite what people are trying to tell you. You just removing this just interesting comments. <laughs> Magic Man said, we've already entered the age of introverts. It's great. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so who I'm with you. Like, I wish it was. I mean, and it's possible to travel the country, but I do wish, like, yeah, you could pretty much in any city hop on the train and go to any other city. You know. Have you ever had pets before? Oh, when I was a kid, like me and my sisters had pets, but no, nah, I don't I don't do pets. If you see Tim with a pet, that means I'm dating again. Cause she wanted a pet. <laughs> <laughs> if you see me with a bet, she wanted a bet. Promise you. Oh, yeah, yeah. David Tell was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Maybe that's where, yeah, I saw him pop up somewhere. Maybe that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. One through three. 133. I think that was where I saw him. Yeah, I was like, oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah, Praveen, you ain't been out of Raleigh Durham since 2019. Bro, like the, the world changed. You, like legit. The, you you, you got to go some places. The world don't look the same. The world don't look the same. Um, I'm down here in Portland. Everybody keeps telling me it ain't the same Portland. It's still cool. It's still a vibe. It's still a vibe. I got to say, I like the, I like the vibe with the, the, the like pe people seem very quirky. There's a lot more like quirky people in Portland. I like that. I like quirky people. I like I like people who just doing what they do. Like this is me. You know, I like that. Seems like there's a lot of them in Portland. Um I think there's a lot of leaders who are introverts. Um I think there are a lot of leaders who like I was talking about earlier when they're at work, if we're talking about leaders in business or leaders in anything. I think there's a lot of leaders who are introverts. It's just when they stop leading in their personal time, they're very introverted. But at work, you know, in business, they're very outgoing. But I think when that's over, they go to their man cave or their woman cave and kind of, you know, keep to themselves. So I don't think I think we appreciate outgoing people, but I don't think all the people we see in public being outgoing are all extroverts. Mike thinks we're entering the end times. Okay, okay. You ever notice, you ever notice the all caps? It's never like a regular comment in all caps. <laughs> it's never like a regular comment. It's never, the all caps is always somewhat, you know, respectfully. Uh, Tyler, I already, already answered that one. Um, do you think the area can cause introversion? I know for me, I'm pretty much me wherever I go. So for me, I don't think the area, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about the same no matter where I go, you know. I'm going to hang out with my friends or people I know at about the same clip as anywhere else. Um, yeah. Okay, see? Mm-hmm. Told you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ray, I see. That was a good one, Randall. That was a good <laughs> That was a good one, Randall. Uh <laughs> Tyler, I'll answer it again if you got disconnected. Um, I don't think I've ever said, I don't think like prices, because Airbnb prices, it's like hotels, like they're different, you know? So there's no set price. Um, you can get some really crappy cheap ones or you can get some really high-end expensive ones. So it, there, there's no way I could say 
this is what it costs to stay in Airbnbs because like it's they're all different. Um, best way to kind of get a price is to, uh, you know, an average is to just like pick a city and see the Airbnb, the prices, you know, because it's different. It depends on cities. It depends on the part of town. You know, there's so many different variables and anybody can set whatever price they want. So like there's no way to say a set average price for Airbnbs. Jennifer K, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Your great day got better. Hey, I'm glad. Hey, I'm glad you have a great day. And I'm glad you're here. Good to see you, Jennifer. Good to see you. Uh, 27. I was never in van life, so I couldn't go back to it. Um, I, I guess I recommend it to someone who wants to do it, you know. Tyrant Casper, how you doing? Uh, the Sixer. I, I don't really do favorites when it comes to places like traveling. I get asked that a lot. I, you know, I don't, I don't, there's some places I find myself going back to a lot, but I don't, I don't really like to rank. Part of that is because, A, I just don't look at stuff that way, but I do realize like, oh, I find myself in Montana a lot. I find myself in Colorado a lot, but I don't, I definitely don't like to put rankings out because I think a lot of times people are asking for themselves. They're like, okay, I'm thinking about doing some traveling. What was your favorite state? So that gives me an ideal, but I prefer people to figure it out themselves. Like if you're thinking about living in a car, living in a van and you, you're my, the states I prefer may not be the states you prefer. So that's why I rarely give any recommendations when it comes to traveling, stuff like that. Cause there's the reasons I like Montana might not be something you're into. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I don't really like to rank and say, oh, you know, I'm more likely to say the, you know, the one or two places that I was like, yeah, I just didn't like that. Um, especially if it was dangerous, but like, I just not really in the ranking places like, you know. Uh, Paul, when I'm in Vegas, I go to the casinos. And when I was in Montana, actually, because they got casinos like in, in a lot of places and oddly enough, you don't ever hear this, but Montana's got a lot of casinos. Um, but they have them in like the back of restaurants and gas stations. But yeah, like sometimes we go out to like a work dinner and we go to the little gambling spot, you know, afterwards and hang out. So yeah, when I'm in Vegas, I'll go to a casino, you know, or hang out. But like I'm not a I might spend twenty dollars. Like I'm not a gambler. But I yeah, I'll go to the casino, it's fine, you know. Andrew, I haven't heard from Crazy Car Lady uh recently. She might be in the chat. I feel like she's been lurking a lot. She got that boyfriend. I feel like she's been doing other stuff. Um, I'll, I haven't heard from her. I might, I might text her. See how she's doing. Uh, yeah, Praveen, I think I did climb trees as a kid. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm sure I did. Ain't no problem, Tyler. Sachs, you should definitely go. Montana's beautiful. Wyoming's beautiful. Uh, I've been to North Dakota, so I guess I've been through South Dakota as well. Uh, but I spent time in North Dakota. North Dakota's cool. But yeah, Montana is a beautiful state. I haven't been to Maine yet. It's on the list. It's on the list. Andreas just got home. How you doing? QP. I uh, have not been to, to BC, West Coast of Columbia, of Canada, excuse me. I guess that's British Columbia. Us Americans aren't up on our 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 Canadian geography. You got to spell it out. Now you can't use abbreviations about Canada. We don't know what you're talking about. We don't do non-America geography. I'm proud of it. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, but thanks, 27 to Tim. I actually, I must thank you for your how to get sober. Um, just quit, keep quitting till you quit. But why I keep wanting it? Is that a question? Or was that part of tenants? Um, I have been to Idaho. I have been to Idaho. Yeah, I was in Idaho Falls. That was bucket list, oddly enough. I've been wanting to go to Idaho Falls for a while. Now I want to go to Boise. So 
I'm gonna have to stop. I got a friend in Boise. I haven't seen her in a while. Um, I want to stop and see her. So, and she does like massage stuff now. So, I haven't had a massage in a while, and I keep saying I'm gonna get a massage from the homie. So, um, yeah. When you were a kid, Montana didn't have speed limits. They got them now, but do they really enforce them? Like, bro, I know in Wyoming, when you hit the interstate and it hits 80 miles an hour, I, I think once in all the times I've been through Wyoming, which I've been through many a times going from Colorado to Montana or back, I think maybe twice I've seen, two or three times I've seen cars pulled over. You hit that 80 mile an hour on highway in Wyoming, nobody cares. It's kind of like that in Montana too. I think it's only 75, but like, unless you're going like 100. Yeah, like nobody's going to care. Yeah, nobody's going to care. What is a flicker tail? I don't know what that, I don't know if that's Christian. Um, <laughs> just <what I> said. <sighs> Silver's doing good, Patrick. What's it up to? What's it up to an ounce? Praveen get massages every month. Praveen making that, that money, boy. He making that cash flow. Monthly massages? Yeah, I, when I was down in, I think that was my first massage ever. When I was down in, um, Latin, not this time, but the time before, uh, me and old tea snacks, travel snacks, went, went and got a massage because I never had one. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, separate rooms. Um, it was fun. But to your point, Fisky, it was weird to have a woman touch me like that for the first time. And it wasn't sexual. So I spent a large portion of the massage keeping myself in check, if and you know what I mean. So I feel like if I got massages routinely, I could enjoy the experience more because I was very much like certain time, you know what I mean? Certain time, like, but she probably used to it. So but that, that lady wasn't even sweating me. But like, I'm, I don't want to be like, bro, like, because you just have like a robe on or whatever. Um, and it's like open, you know what I mean? So I was just like, I actually didn't even have a robe on. Yeah, I think I had a robe on, did I? Or it was something, I had something on. But anyway, like still, you know, yeah. So it was kind of uncomfortable at times because like I was focusing. Oh, where am I? Oh, why do you still crave it? Uh, it's it's an addiction. Um, twenty seven. So like, it's yeah. I mean, if 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 you've been drinking long enough to crave it. That's why you crave it, because you can't just turn cravings off. It's great, you know, like if we could turn cravings off, it'd be no problem. But like, that's the problem is you crave it. So you keep craving it until you've gone without it long enough that you don't crave it. And even that sometimes the cravings just pop up out of nowhere. It's, you know, retired 2019, you said going 80 in Montana, had you scared <laughs> on some of the roads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny, you know, you used to turn speeds and you get on the open highways and it's just every man and woman for themselves. Like, you know, everybody just flying by. Sometimes a little like, oh, okay, this is what we doing? Yeah, that's how it was with me. I'm like, oh, people just, I mean, I'm, I'm like doing 90 and people are flying past me. I'm like, this is what we doing? Like, okay, okay. Uh, any other cities in Montana? Big Sky. Um, I don't know. And there's no other other major cities I'd recommend that I've I, I went to Missoula. It's not a major city either. But uh, I went to Kalispell before it was cool. But there's no really like big cities I spent a lot of time in in Montana to, that I could recommend them. $25 uh, dollars and tents in an ounce? Okay, okay. That ain't bad at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I 
had a massage therapist do a drive-by on it. <laughs> Tell you, man, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. You know? I wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh, it's, you know, I won't, there won't be no whatever, you know, older one. Nope. Nope. It was just like, bro, like, it's all we know. Okay. Hey, Tyler, I mean, if, if, if the savings, which that is a tremendous savings, you said, what do you think about moving from a $2,000 studio, a $2,000 studio, where do you live? A $2,000 studio into just a bedroom for seven fifty. dollars I have to share a washroom with a stranger about me saving him big time. Um, if the savings, which is, what's that, $1,250 a month is worth it, which I would say it is for most of us, I've shared a, a bathroom with the person before and just rented a room. You get used to it. Here's the beauty of, of the human condition. You can get used to almost anything. And if it's saving me over $1,000 a month, you know, that 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 couple days where it's awkward, um, now it does come down to like, who's the other person? But yeah, um, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Because um, yeah, that, that's a lot of money to save. And even if there are any issues, you just think about the money you're saving. But I think rather quickly, within the first month, you'll be so used to it. Like it won't, I get you won't even bother you. Virgo just got your hair and nails did feel like a million bucks. Let's go. Let's go. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I'm good tonight. It sounds like you're good too. Lee, I'm ready for summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two K for a studio. That's crazy. I mean, and and it's 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 funny because people are like, nah, that's regular so on. But I'm like, no. In the grand scheme of things, it's crazy, and it's still crazy that even in certain areas that's normal. It's still crazy. You know, even though it's accepted and people do it, it's still crazy because I'm like, I know I can go in Florida and get a three-bedroom trailer for $500 a month. Okay, three-bedroom, double-wide, maybe like $700 a month. And I'll get me a little half-acre of land. You know what I mean? I mean, it's in the woods in Florida. But, like, you know what I mean? It's just weird to me, like, the differences, like, in prices we pay and, like, what's normal in certain areas. I'm like, why not just go somewhere where it's cheaper? But I understand there's things, you know, uh, uh, but it's not always that easy. But it's just crazy me when I hear different prices like I went last time I was down in Florida that we passed like a, a new subdivision and there's not a lot of new subdivisions where my, my, my buddy lives and he was like yeah they're 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 clearing they're selling off the farmland and putting in these starting to put in these new subdivisions with these expensive houses he's like a house in there will probably run you three hundred fifty thousand dollars and coming from Bozeman three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a brand new like nice you know, three, two is crazy. Them things were sold in a, a, a day, you know, the whole subdivision. So I was like, that's it? <laughs> like, <laughs> for a brand new house, nice yard, 350, I'm like, that's it? You know, so it's just, I don't know, it's just weird to me. Okay, I've ran it long enough on that. Um, Now, keep in mind, that was like North Florida in the mountains, in the, not the mountains, in like the, the woods. North Florida is basically South Georgia, so the more rural areas. It ain't the same in like Central Florida or, or South Florida. That was North Florida. Jefferson paying 600 a month in Nashville, written half a house. Let's go. Let's go. And he pays you to cut the grass, fix stuff. Okay, okay. That's, that's a nice situation. Yeah, Tyler, I would, I would jump on that. You better jump on that before somebody in the chat figures out where it's at. <laughs> you should do it. 
Lee, I would, I would, I don't think it's so much that the homeless go to the most expensive cities in town as it is that the most expensive cities and towns create a lot of homeless people. It's not that there's just homeless people springing up and wandering to expensive towns. I think it's that the towns are so expensive, people become homeless. So like, and, and I'll tell you, this is something that recently I've really been checking myself on because I feel like I had a very negative as much as I was like, homelessness is a problem and it's sad, I still felt like I had a very negative internal dialogue about the homeless and I probably still have work to do. But here recently, especially like here in Portland, like I'm like, bro, this is their city too. They got the right to be here. You know, I, I instead of me being like, oh man, I got to walk past this row of tents. It's more like, you know what I mean? That's what the, you know. Like it's it's sad, and I wish we could figure out a way they don't have to live in these tents. But I don't. It's not a burden to me. The burden is theirs because, like they, like the the, the person, the, the tragedy is them. What they have to go through. The tragedy is not that I feel a little unsafe walking past these tents. The tragedy is that people have to live in these tents. So I've really been trying to work on like not, you know, being down on the homeless as much as like. Let's look at the society that created it. You know what I mean? Why are cities getting so expensive that people have to live on the sidewalk? Even though I know some uh, homeless people, it's because of you know addictions, mental illness, but a lot of it's financial too. You know, there was a time you could have an addiction and and still live in an apartment. <laughs> that was okay. It's true. True. Not advocating addiction, you know what I mean? It, you know. Wisconsin is cheap. I, I could believe that. There's still some cheap places. Thank you for that, Kendra. I need to. Actually, I got a friend in Wisconsin. I want to visit with him. There's still cheap places. People will be like, oh, but nobody wants to live there. Well, okay. Pay more to live in places people want to live. I bet there's some amazing people in Wisconsin living amazing lives. Oh, Todd Ryan Casper, Harvest 11, 1135 in Fresno. Okay. Patrick shopping for more silver. Phil, <laughs> silver. Yeah, it's just there, there are still affordable places, I think. But as a whole, I mean, I've even seen this from places that were affordable five, six years ago are now expensive. Bozeman's a good example. Like it used to be affordable. Now it's astronomical, you know. Nick moved from Phoenix to Albuquerque because it's cheaper, doesn't regret it. Let's go. I'm, I'm just waiting for the day when prices start going down, but I'm a little nervous, like what's going to drive them down. So, but yeah. You know. And yeah, Fisky, I, I, I totally see that part of it too. It's like, yeah, when I've been, when I've had issues with homeless people where I felt unsafe or I was unsafe, that's my problem. Um, and I get that. I get that. But I, I think I for me, I know that's all I used to kind of think about was the potential of something negative happening to me when I had interactions with homeless people. And now, while that's still in my mind, A, I try not to go there first because I think the majority of homeless people aren't violent. Um, and also... I want to, once again, ask, well, what put them in that situation? You know what I mean? I think it's possible to be scared and be in a situation, but also have empathy for the person scaring you 
because of the situation they're in. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do that. Like when I was trapped on the in, in Denver, trapped on the light rail because the light rail stopped and the lady was screaming in my face like this, like here, you know, for five minutes. almost. You know, she was going up and down, coming back like I was scared. I was scared. Now, I knew I could take her. So I said, if she touched me, I'm punching her in the face. I don't advocate assault. But like if she had tried to harm me, it was we was both going to jail, basically. But um, and I would have been late for lunch because I was going downtown to have lunch with my friend, you know. But short of that, it was just I had to sit there and take it, you know. And as aggravated and nervous as I was, I also was like, well, obviously she's dealing with some problems way worse than what I'm dealing with. So Tim, give her a little grace. You know what I mean? She didn't harm you. You know, she didn't, you know, other than just kind of scaring you, you're fine. So I had, I had to give her grace after I calmed down. Um, but, you know, that's what I'm, how I'm trying to look at it these days. Billy Blitz, how you doing? Lee, you got anxiety last in two months? Lee, I think you need to get back to, the, to, to like a, a, you need to get back in, into like a beautiful environment. I think your anxiety is, is where you're at. That's just me putting that out there. I could be totally wrong. But if you've never had anxiety for two months and you've had it last two months, it might have something to do with where you've been for the last two months. I'm just putting that out there, Lee, because I love you. Yellowstone, right, you up if you take a short lunch break? Now, we have to be fair and say, well, you don't have to say the company if you don't want to, but there's lots of different companies that operate in Yellowstone. I just say that in case someone is thinking about working at Yellowstone, it may be a different company. I just want to put that out there. Not all companies in Yellowstone are created equal. I, the company I worked for, I worked for Zantera. I never got written up for taking a lunch break. Um, like they made you take your lunch break. So, oh, you said if you take a short one, if you don't do the full lunch break. Now, I have seen that at companies where if you don't take the whole 30 minutes or whatever, you get in trouble. And that's that's because they will get in trouble if you don't take it. You're required by law. They're required by law to give you a 30 minute lunch break. So if you don't take it, you could come back and say, oh, they wouldn't give it to me. So I understand that. And, and most employees, if you explain that to them, get it. It's like, hey, we could be sued if it shows you're not taking your full lunch break and somebody complains. So you have to take your full lunch break. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's a draconian like, yeah, it's like there's a reason. Hey, for me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Uh, jacked and stacked. I bringing it back to the original topic. Uh, I do think there are more, I do think more people are identifying as introverts these days. Uh, I think it's, it's almost like cool to be an introvert now, but I think it's a byproduct of the loneliness epidemic we're going through. I think a lot of people are displaying introverted tendencies just because they don't have anybody to hang out with. So you get comfortable being alone. Uh, I think it's easier now. I talked about earlier, the whole world can be in the palm of your hand. So like, whereas before you kind of had to go in the living room to watch TV or, you know, whatever. Now I can be in my room with the door closed and the light off and have the whole world right here. And I can interact with the few people I might want to interact with around the world, around the country from my phone. So I think that breeds more introverted lifestyle. Um, so I think we're seeing a lot more than that than we used to. Yes, yeah, Yabzilla the killer. Um, says, how do you stop feeling lonely? I think we, we naturally know how to stop being lonely, and that's to like hang with me. I'm gonna say more. A, I think we naturally know, like, if I'm lonely, I need to be around somebody. 
the, the real question is when I don't have anyone to be around, how do I stop being lonely? Um, and I don't know if you can. You know, you can distract yourself maybe from the loneliness. So what I try to do is if I'm feeling lonely, I try to call somebody. If I'm near somebody, I try to hang out with somebody. If not, I'll go for a walk, take a hike, watch some a good show, some comedy. I just try to either get unlonely or distract myself from the loneliness. But one of the things I've really been working on lately is realizing that loneliness isn't the end of the world. There are a lot of things worse than loneliness. So if my big issue at the moment is I'm lonely, then I'm trying to learn to just like sit with that until I'm not lonely anymore. I know it's a very unpopular thing, but like I think sometimes we compound the loneliness with how we feel about the loneliness. And it's like, I'm lonely. Oh, but if it's just like, yeah, I'm lonely right now and I don't like it and hopefully it changes, but right now I'm lonely. You know, this is way worse. If someone's like, hey, you want to be lonely or starving to death? I'd be like, give me loneliness, please. Um, so, you know what I mean? So it's like, I just try, I'm trying to, like, loneliness isn't in the world. Sometimes we're lonely. And I just try to, it doesn't feel good, but I just try to either do something, like I said, to change it, or sometimes I just have to be lonely. You know. How do you find passions? I, I think you just try different stuff and... Some of them you just get very excited about, but I think it takes action. Like very rarely do I think like passions just fall on your lap is possible, but I think we have to get out there and try stuff. And then we discover, oh, I really liked it. I know. Mm, that's a good point, Andrew. Andrew's come through with a good point today. People might become introverts because they can't afford to do much. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but I feel like there's, free activities out there maybe but that's a that's something to think about hey suho i hope you don't end up i hope you don't end up getting evicted and being homeless um hope you get that resolved with the landlord what up john wolf in the building simple natural black life how you doing happy thursday again Richard moves to the DR. Dominican Republic is much cheaper. Think the generation more introverted now? Yeah, I think it's, and I think as I think each, it's possible that each generation being raised by a more introverted generation could become even more introverted than that one. You know? Or it'd be a more introverted culture. Because once again, I think some people are just naturally born introverts. And I think other people pick up like introverted ways because I think there are some people that if possible would be very outgoing and extroverted, but the world around them, the way they were raised, the fact that they don't have any friends leads them to live a very introverted lifestyle, I think. Dennis, how you doing? Praveen, I, I do think it's it's natural that if we're playing the blame game, we're going to blame the generation before us because who else, we're not going to blame grandma, which a lot of times it is grandma. Uh, you know what I mean? But like you're obviously you're obviously going to blame the closest generation. It's always your parents who screwed you up, especially these days. Um, you know, um, I don't abide by the blame game. Uh, you know, maybe if I had bad parents, I might but I had good parents. But even then, I think like most parents are just trying to do the best they can, you know, and they're reacting to how they were raised. How they raise you is, is a direct, uh, directly uh, 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 affected by how they were raised, you know? So if we're going to play the blame game in parenting, it never ends. Because your parents raise you based on how your grandparents raised them, based on how your great grandparents raised them. So it just keeps going back and back. You know, it's not. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's just like this is this is the, the the childhood I had. These are the parents I got. You know, and like I said, I totally understand as someone who had a good childhood 
that sounds crazy, me saying that, if you're someone who had a horrible childhood. But I think the logic still stands. Like, we can blame people all the time. But, and it, I think it is therapeutic sometimes if that was really your childhood to get it out and talk about it. But there's a difference between coming to terms with it and blaming somebody the rest of your life. Like, just continually blaming doesn't help us heal. Accepting it, talking about it, getting it out, you know, working through it helps. But just constantly blaming the past generation for our problems doesn't help. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do think the boomer situation is different because that that's a cultural. I think that one's a little different. You know what I mean? Everyone's blaming the boomer. You know, I, don't, yeah, I think that was a little different. But um. Why do a lot of people become doomers? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Are there more doomers that are introverted than extroverted? I I, I, I don't know if that's true. Um, the numbers might be the same. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's true. Like, how would you ever know? You know? Because once again, I think we, we don't, I think sometimes introverts might stick out more in negative stuff because it's easy to be like, oh, he was always in his room. She was always in a room. And then, you know, but like no one ever, when an extrovert does something weird, no one ever brings up their extroversion, I think. Whereas if you're an introvert and you do something, people are going to bring that up. Yeah, we knew. Always by herself. We knew something was wrong. But like, no one's going to be like, yeah, we knew. He was always out hanging out with his friends. We knew he was going to do something wrong. You know, so I think maybe that's why sometimes it might seem that introverts are more, but I don't, you know, I don't know if it's true. Uh, I don't think being an introvert makes it hard to trust people. No, um, I think your experience is what people determine how you trust people. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that just this is my personal opinion. There's a lot of things that I think. Honestly, at the end of the day, being an introvert means you just like spending to my mind, my definition. You just like spending more time by yourself. Um, you know what I mean? So. I don't like I'm an introvert and I trust the people I trust wholeheartedly you know it, it i trust the people i trust you know what I mean? but like i know lots of extroverts who don't trust nobody you know what i mean i know introverts who don't trust nobody you know so like i don't think that has anything to do with it i think it has to do with if you've been pooped on by a lot of people you know if you've been through if you've been around a lot of untrustworthy people especially in your childhood and growing up you're probably not gonna trust people if you had parents who were always saying, don't trust nobody, you know, don't trust nobody but your mama, keep one eye on her, one eye on her, you know, then you might not trust people. But I think extrovert or introvert, you can trust people if you were raised in that type of environment, I think. I, I, where's the line between introvert and socially anxious? And, and why is that funny? You know, I, I think it's, I think it's interesting that we laugh at people or we kind of poke fun at people who are socially anxious. Like, what, you know what I mean? There are certain things that, Oh, that person just got anxiety in public. <laughs> like, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, why are there certain issues that people deal with that we find humor? You know what I mean? But that we think it's okay to make light of. Like, that's horrible to be socially anxious. And as someone who's an introvert and socially anxious, like, where's the line? You know what I mean? I get anxiety in public. I don't like going in restaurants I've never been in 
by myself. It's hard for me to do. I'll walk to the door, walk back to the car. Sometimes I can't do it. If I can't look inside that, that, that building, I'm probably not going in. You know what I mean? So like, but where's the line? Like, how do we know? And honestly, does it matter which one you are? You know, that's the weird thing about labels is we like to make distinctions based around labels that doesn't really matter. Like if I spent all my time alone, does it matter if I just got social anxiety or if I'm an introvert? Either way, I ain't left the house. You know what I mean? Like what's the, the only difference is like one of them, you can be an introvert and just, that's what you do. The social anxiety, maybe there's, things you can do to cure it. So that would be the only kind of difference there is like, okay, this person's, maybe this is curable because they would love to be out and about and be extroverted, but they have this anxiety. So if we could work on the anxiety, maybe we could get them where they need to be, where they'd like to be. But like, that's definitely not a, you know, something to poke fun at the person for. Like, I don't like, why is, I don't know. That's, I don't know, like, bro, like, it's just, it's just like we like to pick on people or, you know, judge people because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Brehan, I deleted my, my Bumble. So, respectfully, I didn't unmatch from you. I deleted my Bumble. So I didn't say nothing to nobody because <laughs> I deleted my Bumble and my Tinder. Uh, though I will say I was feel I was feeling the I was feeling the profile. You seem very unique. I liked it, but uh, I d I deleted my Bumble. So yeah, don't think I was being rude. But I appreciate you coming through and and still speaking. You know, but yeah, I deleted my Bumble. Uh, Yabs. Oh, I love this one. Yabzilla the Killer uh, said, "I also want to understand your womb to tomb philosophy." What makes you try once to live? Um, what's the alternative? You know, like it's a. I enjoy life, so that's why I'm big on. I try to do things that make me happy. I try to go after my passions. I try to spend time with people I love. Do things I love with people I love because it makes me happy. But beyond that, what's the alternative? Like you're you're here until you're not. So like I'm not gonna do anything crazy. In my youth, when I was very depressed, I tried, and that's not the route either. So it's like if I'm gonna be here, I might as well like be here. You know what I mean? Like, so wound the tomb is like that, it's it's very freeing. It actually makes it easier because it's like, oh, all I have to do is get from womb to tomb. I don't have to be successful. I don't have to achieve any of these other metrics anyone says. I just got to get through it. And like, is there some big prize at the end of it? Probably not. You know, does any of this really mean anything? Doubtful. But if I enjoy it, I don't mind doing it. Like I always say, we don't question the meaning of life when we're happy. If I'm watching a movie I love, I don't pause it halfway through. But like, wait a second, why are we here? No, 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 it's a great movie, yes. But what am I doing here? No, nah, like when we're enjoying ourselves, when we're with someone we love, you know, when we're doing something we really enjoy, we don't question it. So I just try to keep myself as much as possible in mind frames where I don't question it. And when I am not enjoying myself or going through it, I'm just like, oh, I gotta, all I got to do is, you know, I got 40 more years and it's over, bro. <laughs> I got 40, if that, I got 40 more years and I got to deal with none of this. So like just hang in there until, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, good question. Here's the thing, Patrick. I, I don't know if boomers are out of touch. Their reality is their reality. So like, their, the world has changed, but once again, their reality is their reality. So they're interacting with the new world the way their generation interacts with the new world. 
So I don't know if we can say they're out of touch, you know? Because, like, that's just how someone who was born in 1945 interacts with the world of 2024. Now, some of their advice, I think, and this is any generation, um, I think if I'm, you know, 75, giving advice to my 20-year-old great-grandson or grand, you know, about work, you know, it's the world's different. Um, but I imagine there's lots of boomers who realize that. But that's all they got. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know if we can say they're out of touch. I mean, I feel like that's probably how it's always been. You know, great grandpa came. And I do think the world has changed a lot faster. So maybe that's why it seems that way. But like, they're just, their reality is their reality, bro. Like it's, I don't, I just don't think we should be so hard on the baby boomer generation and speak so negatively of them. Cause like, it, like what did they do? Like, you know, if any of us had been born when they were born, we'd be the same people. It's not that they're just a whatever generation. It's just any of us would be that way. 20 years from now, they might talk about us like that when we're that age, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. From, like, you know, it's just, I think we're a little hard on, you know, I don't know. BF, what up? Glad you're loving the videos. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, a negative comment about Gen Z. Like, why do we have to be so negative about generations? It's nobody's fault. Gen Z is just a byproduct of the world they grew up in. If any of us grew up when it, it was just, you know what I mean? Like, why do we act like, oh, I'm a different generation, so I'm superior? No. People react to the world that their generation, like at the time, they're interacting with it. You know, the world looked like this when I was born. So when I get this age, this is how we kind of interact with it. You know what I mean? This generation of people raised me this way. It makes me this, you know what I mean? Like we act like there's just bad generations. No, they're byproducts of the world around them. They're byproducts of their upbringing. How are we judging generations, bro? They're just people. They're just people. Any of us born in that generation would have the same traits. I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know what I mean? I don't understand. Like, why, why we don't see this? You know what I mean? Like, there, how, you can't. Yeah, I'm removing that because, come on, bro. Like, why, why is that the thing to do now? Oh, that generation sucks. What does that get you? I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry. I don't know. Yeah, Nick, thank you, Nick. Expecting every generation to have the same values is ridiculous. On one hand, we'll be like, oh, the world is changing so quickly. The world is going to end. But we expect the kids to be exactly like us. I was born in the end of the 70s. I expect kids who were born at the end of the 90s to act like me when the world was totally different. There was no internet when I was born. These kids have been born with the internet, but we expect them in, in any in every aspect to behave just like we do. They don't work like we did. Of course they don't. Because their whole life they've had the internet and they know there's more opportunities at work than when I started working. You couldn't be an Uber driver when, <laughs> when I started working. You know what I mean? Like they, the world's totally different. Why? Why? It would be weird if the generations after us behave just like we do, that's called being robots. That's not human behavior. If the world changes and people don't change, like what are we doing here, bro? Okay, I gave you a chance. Now you're getting blocked. Come on, bro. Like this, y'all, y'all know this. If you're if you're spreading negativity, especially if it's negativity where like, hey, that's negative, and you just keep doubling down. Like what it is about Gen Z that makes you want to do five back-to-back -back comments about how bad they are. That's crazy. Respectfully. Hey, what up, that guy from Texas? How you doing? Exactly, Fisky. 
you got to blame the people doing the hiring. You got to blame the people who raised people if there's problems. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, I got him. I got, I, I, you know, I, I, I almost didn't want to block because that person comments a lot, but it just was getting too crazy. I feel like they're going through something. Oh, Lee, I agree with you. I agree that the rich have more opportunities. I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Um, I try to, even that, I try to look at, that's their blessing. You know, now is it fair for someone to have, it's not fair when there are people in abject poverty and we have extreme wealth. That's the only, that's what bothers me about it. When we have extreme wealth and then we have people in extreme poverty, no one should be in, in poverty. Um, extreme or otherwise. No one should be in poverty. But someone who, you know, has a little money, that might be their blood. You know what I mean? Someone's making half a million a year because they worked really hard. I can't be mad at that, that if their kids have more, you know what I mean? Like that might be their blessing. I, I just try not to find groups of people to hate. I just try not to find groups of people to be mad at because I, I, I ask myself, why? What does that do for me? Unless it's like a group of people that's doing something heinous. You know what I mean? Like if you're out massacring people, I don't like that behavior. I, I still try not to hate the people, but I don't like that behavior. But when people are just living their lives and they may be a different generation than me, or they might be in a different tax bracket than me, or they might, you know, different whatever. I'm just trying to be more like, why am I so mad? <laughs> but I do agree rich people have better opportunities. I, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Money buys opportunity. Um, I wish it, you know, we all had the same opportunities. I wish we all had access to everything we need. We all were comfortable. We all were fed. We all had housing, all that stuff. We've sadly created a world where that isn't true. But I understand some people get blessed with wealth. You know, I, I you know, I, I just be like, well, how do I get the coins I need? Andrew, I definitely do think the system, like I said, we've, we've created a system where, you know, it's it's a funnel. Yeah, I do believe the system is set up by the some very greedy individuals at the tippy, tippy, tippy top to, to funnel the wealth upward. Um, if you just go along with the system, I think that's what you kind of ultimately end up doing, you know. Ben, I agree. We love our labels. We love our generalizations. Um, and then we love to poop on people with because they have a label we put on. <laughs> like that, that's what's I was thinking about this in Walmart the other day. I don't know why. But I was thinking about like words and how powerful words are. Because if I say millennial or I say Gen Z, we know what that means. And we know everything in all, or if I say boomer, we know the popular ideal of what that represents. But what if you didn't know what that word meant? You know how long it would take to explain to someone what exactly you're talking about and like how, how in depth, like how much explaining you would have to do to get your point across. If you were like, okay, boomer, and someone didn't know what that meant, they're like, what does that mean? You'd have to go through this whole backstory. Oh, well, there's people born in this generation. They did this, and like they're out of the, you know, all this stuff. It's like, it's just, it, I don't know. I don't know why that fascinated me. I'm like, wow, this, if you didn't know what a millennial was, you'd have no clue. You know, like it, it, it would, it's not just a word you can explain in a sentence. Oh, that means this. You'd have to go through the whole, this whole situation we've built up around certain stuff, certain labels. That's what I'm like, yeah, I don't like these labels, bro.
trying to live without a credit card, Nathan. Um, commendable. I've, I've done that for the past 25 plus years now, I think. Um, and if I don't, what you do first? I, I mean, I don't think there's, I mean, after you cut up your credit cards, I don't think there's anything different you have to do. You just don't use a credit card. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think there's really any steps to it. You just don't use a credit card. So, yeah, if you got a bank account and a debit card, you know, it, yeah, you just, that's the thing you're doing is not using credit cards. But honestly, it's not that hard. Like, I don't even, I might get me a little, I said this, and, and this was now that I'm in my 40s, I feel like I'm more responsible. I said I might get me a little travel card, you know, but other than that, like, I, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't occur to me and I haven't had a credit card since I was like 19. It doesn't occur to me that, oh, man, I don't have credit cards. So it's really not, especially these days. It's not it used to be harder. It's not that hard these days. Gregory, how you doing? Yeah, nobody talks about Gen X anymore. They used to. They used to back in the day, though. Oh, man. That, that was, yeah. Now nobody cares. I agree, Adam. Bro. I think all people are the same. Most people are just trying to get through this thing. But, yeah, we all have different situations, different life experiences, different genetic makeup. But, yeah, most we're just trying to get through this thing, you know. Hmm. I gotta check on something. What's okay? I'll see. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we good. Uh, no, Lola, I have debit card. There's a difference between debit card, and credit cards. So I have debit card. I just don't have credit cards. Oh, uh -huh. and that proves the like that just shows you how synonymous they are now. That if you got your debit card. There's very few things you can't do. Um, there are some rental car places. That's probably the only time I've ever had an issue. There's like some rental car places that get a little. Um, but even then, like if you have a round trip airline ticket, they're fine with it then too. But, you know, I've been to the airport before just to rent a car locally. And they're like, "Ooh, I've got it done. But yeah. Yeah. Debit cards. Yeah, nothing wrong. Because I mean, the, the the issue with credit cards is spending money you don't have. That's my issue with it. Like, I don't want to spend money I don't have. Because I don't like owning people. So that was always my issue. Like, if I can't afford it, unless it's something I can finance, but like, you know, a car or something like that. But like, if I can't afford it, I don't really want it. You know what I mean? Like, I was just out one, but like, I don't, I don't need it. You know what I mean? Um, I'll wait till I can afford it. Uh, debit cards are accepted pretty much everywhere, Jamie. Um, as someone who exclusively loses uses debit cards, there's almost nowhere that doesn't accept debit cards. Could, could, what's an what's a, what's a place that doesn't accept debit cards? I'd be curious to hear. Oh, that guy from Texas. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Two guess why? Thank you. So no credit card for me. I don't like own people money. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm turning my light on. I'm with you. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't like own people money. Like I. I just. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, like, and if you got credit cards, cool, but like, it just seems weird to me that like, that's normal. Um, that's normal that like, there's people who go their whole adult life with credit card debt. And that's normal. Like no one bats an eye at that. People will bat an eye if it gets too high. Um, but like, I don't, I don't think that's, no, I don't want that to be normal for me, respectfully. Uh, yeah, I, I, Jamie, I appreciate the input, but I, I think you're wrong on this one. I haven't had a credit card in 25 years, and I don't have to say it's a Visa. I don't like I, I just give my debit card. Like I've never short of renting a car. That was the only time. Like there's there like what other place cares? I think people actually like debit cards because they get their money. You know what I mean? Like it's they get the money and you and they you can't. 
I think I guess you could technically get it back, but it's it's easier for the credit card companies to to cancel the charge. Debit card, they don't got your money, you know. So, yeah, respectfully, I don't know all these places you're talking about where you can't use a debit card. Or you got to say it's Visa. Oh, Gregory in Canada. Okay. You ran into places that'll take debit cards as a payment, won't take anything but a credit card as incidental. Okay. Or right. respect. I've never had that in, in America ever. They just take it off my debit card and then put it back. You know, that always annoys me. That always annoys me. Uh, when I'm like, bro, $75. You know, you stay at some of these nicer hotels, they hit you with like $75. I'm like, bro, like, oh, you'll get it back in six to seven business days. I'm like, bro, that's a week. I need that. Yeah, Ted, I've seen I've seen that too. Um, you know, places that allow you to set up different. I think one of my banks does that allows you to set up. Yeah, different savings within your savings account. Um, it'll allow you to set up different saving sections. Thought that was cool. Yeah, you know they're coming out with a lot. That's the thing too. They've, they're coming out with like so many different banking is so different now. I still only use credit unions because I refuse to use an actual bank. Um, you know, it's it's the lesser of the same evil, but yeah. Um, you know. But yeah, they've come up with so many different banks. It still surprises me um, that people still use the traditional banks even though we know they have all these crazy fees and whatever, like there are certain banks we all know, you know, are, are fee heavy and nobody likes them, but people keep using them. But I'm like, there's so many alternatives for banks now, you know, the difference between bank and credit union. i found that credit union, like my credit, I have like no fees, you know, I, I found, and there might be banks now that have no fees, but like, I think I pay $1 a month because I opted into the identity theft thing. But like I started using credit. My dad put me on a credit unions, but like there's like no fees because it's like own, you own the you're like an owner got it, or a member of the credit union. So it's not like, oh, a bank where this is a business. It's like, oh, you're a member of this credit union. So like no fees. That's what I always liked about it. Like there's no like I don't. And there's a lot of other perks. I personally think it's easier to get a loan from a credit union, but I've never tried to get one from a bank, so I can I can't justify that. But I love credit unions. Like I said, no no fees. I think some of them do might have some fees now, but yeah, I I know I when I find go for a credit union, I'm like yeah, I'm not trying to pay no fees. So you know yeah. Oh, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. Not in this climate. We're not doing that in this climate. Yeah, I'll tell you, look in the credit unions. No, no one talks about it, but there's a lot of a lot of perks at credit unions that banks don't have. Um, and I just kind of felt from like when I was younger, I used banks. And I just kind of feel like, especially like a local credit union, it's not a huge organization. Um, for example, here's an example. Um, I called my credit union a couple days ago and uh, they answered the phone in like two minutes. Like I got through the one, like, oh, this call may be monitored, blah, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. And then like, it wasn't even two minutes. It might've been like a minute. So I answered, like, I thought it was the recording. You know how you'll be on hold and they'll be like, your call is important to us. Someone will answer. I thought it was that. And it was the actual person. Like literally every time I call, no problem. Um, actually, my debit card, it got locked. Um, and so from Tinder. Yeah, yeah. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. But my Tinder was popping. 
here in Portland. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna spring for the unlimited or whatever. And it shut my debit card down. Uh, I didn't know it until I went to get coffee and dude was like, no, that ain't working. So I, I literally called and a minute later, she fixed it. That would not happen at the average bank, I don't think, especially the big banks. So like, I love credit unions because like it is more family. You know, I can, I can go for years without going to my credit union and I can walk in there and they remember, maybe not years, well, it might have been years. I've, I've gone over a year and not went to my credit union. And then I walked in the door and they was like, oh, hey, how you doing? Um, they're like, you still working at so-and-so or you don't, you know, like they still remember me, you know? So I think it's just a smaller, you know, more community thing as opposed to like big banks. Oh, your credit union merge start charging a fee. Eh. Nope, we're not doing that either. Yeah, man. Old which the lady was like, yeah, for some reason, Visa has been shutting down a lot of accounts when you try to buy something online. I was like, oh, she was like, what is this? What is this? She's like, I see the charge. She was like, got, got in Tinder. And I was like, ooh, I think that says go Tinder. I was like, yeah, I felt, I felt very, you know how embarrassing it is to tell the, 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 the credit union representative that you was trying to get the unlimited on Tinder and it shut. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. You know, I do what I do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an honest man. Oh, many me says when buying my first home, my credit union offered to pay up to 2k of the, of the down payment. I'm telling you credit unions got some some like, you know, a lot of times when I'm opening one, um, yeah, they'll have all this cool stuff. I'm like, wow, y'all do that? They're like, yeah. That's how I got my Prius. That's how I got my Prius. They told me when I opened the account, hey, we do car loans. And then when I wanted one, I just walked in and was like, hey, I want a car loan. I promise you, they said, how much do you want? I'm like, aren't you supposed to run some numbers and see what I can get? They was like, ah, mm. you know, I'm like, well, give me this. They're like, all right, let's see. Yeah, they came back. Yeah, you can get it. Like, it was very easy. Once again, Fisky, I'm, I'm, I don't go out much. Like, I, I just don't meet a lot of women, and I'm very picky. Like, you see, I, I was here for a few days. My Bumble was blowing up. My Tinder was blowing up. And then I was like, I ain't trying to do this. Like, I'm, I'm very introverted. So even the... The, the process of like meeting women, going for coffee, going out to dinner is too much for me sometimes. I just don't, like if I organically meet a woman and like we hit it off, cool. But I the, the introvert in me just ain't got time. Every time I go to a different city, I get on the apps and then a week later I delete them. I, I've done this a hundred times, you know, so many times. I just don't have the, to do it, bro. Like I don't care. I don't care. So like, it's not a, I can't get women. It's just, bro, like, I don't, I don't just have the energy to, to date like that. Like, I don't know. Rick, I didn't do much today. I walked to the grocery store and came home. I didn't do nothing today. Lola, um, you don't really have to qualify a credit. I think some some credit unions, you just have to live in the area. Most of them. Some of them might be like, oh, you have to work for certain companies or, you know, they have like armed forces credit unions. But most of them, for me, I think it's always just been like, you just have to live in the area. Most of them. I will say, though, Fisky, I have been to some cities where I got no matches. It's weird. Certain cities I go to, nothing. Other cities I go to, it blows up. So it is, I understand dudes not getting a lot of matches. Um, and I mean, maybe they're not cute, respectfully. You know, it, it is a visual thing. Maybe their profile is wonky, but I do know that sometimes, yeah, I've been places I didn't get no matches, but I've been other places where like, it was crazy, you know what I mean? So I, I, I know it's not me, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I just be, I just don't have the, the, the energy, bro. The merciful one, I probably would never win the Powerball because I don't play, because I don't care. But if somehow I won the Powerball without playing, I would pay my taxes on it. 
And then I would immediately give half or more of it away to charity. Like, honestly, if it was 300 million and I paid my taxes and still had 150 million, I'm giving 100 million away to charity. I promise you. What do I need that much money for? That's why I never play the Powerball because I don't need that much money. But if I had it, yeah, I'm giving most of it to charity. I might hang on to 20 million or something. And then I'm going to buy some land. I'm going to make sure all my friends and family are straight. You know, you know, makes a few investments. Then probably like keep doing what I'm doing. I don't have any real lofty goals that require lots of money. So like, you know. Uh, Wilkins, I, I think some credit unions might charge a fee to get in, but I, I've been to ones that didn't. Um, I think it just depends. Yeah, I'll, I'll go somebody quick. Yeah, and just you know, I, I just don't. Like I said, who uh, uh, was her name? Bohan was in here earlier. Thought I unmatched from her. I really liked her profile. I did. I remember I was like, oh, I was happy she's different. She's unique. But I just got fed up with Bumble and Tinder. I was like, I'm not doing this. Um, so if you're still listening, I'm on Instagram. Um, Andrew, I, I don't know when I'll get a home base. Like, I can't. Like, every now and then sometimes in life, I'll kind of see a glimpse of what I, okay, I see that. Like, I know I'm going to get a home base, but like, I just don't know when. Like, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. Um, I, I think about it pretty regularly. Not from a place of like, oh, you know, I'm I'm more excited about the community. I am I want a home base for the community. Like, I want to be able to know I got friends on deck. And if I feel like hanging out, I can call, hey, let's run up to the coffee shop. I want, I like knowing, I like having certain restaurants I eat at regularly. You know, when I was in Denver, I liked knowing that when I went to the Chinese restaurant, she was going to say, hello, sweetie, how you doing? She knew me. I go to the, the, the Starbucks, they know me. You know, I go on Target, they know me. Like, I like that. I like, you know, I had friends there. Go downtown, eat with my friend Taylor. You know, like, that's what I, I crave about home base is like, A, it is somewhere to be. But B, it's just like, I like that community. I like the familiarity. I like having friends. Like, that's probably what I think about most. Kendra, I've heard other women say that too. Like, y'all dudes do not know how to take pictures. But that's because who's ever taught a man how to take pictures? Hmm? You know, that's not something other dudes that are like, bro, you need to, you know what I mean? Women will do that. Girl, you need to. Men, like, we don't, I think what we should do as men is go on and look at the other men's profiles, and then we can identify what they're doing wrong and not do it. But men aren't going to look at other men's profiles. You know, that's gay. That's what people would say. Uh, even men were very, you know, heterosexual men is not going to look at other men's profiles, even though I think it would benefit us. I ask women. Because I got a lot of female friends that I'm not dating. We're just friends. So I'll ask them. Like, I hear their stories. So some stuff I know is like, yeah, that's what we're, you know, not, not, I'm not trying. Like, I'll be like, what, what, what stood out about the guy you're talking to now's profile? You know, guys you don't like, you swipe left on. What is it about it? Um, but I think maybe most men don't have anyone to talk to that about, you know, ask them. Fifi getting them good, them good uh, credit union rates. Yeah, the car dealer know about it too. Yeah, they will go down there to that credit union. They got you. Gregory said, I did the maths one day, figured I could live the rest of my life without working on 3.5 million based on living to 100. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, better flight. It's not that we're take men take bad pictures from a photography standpoint, I think we take pictures of stupid stuff. Like, do women really care to see a picture of you shirt off on your car? You know what I mean? I think we just take the pictures we think will attract women, and that's not what women want to see. It's not that the pictures are blurry. 
You know what I mean? It's not that the pictures are bad from a photography standpoint. It's just we take pictures of dumb stuff. I personally don't like, like when women take pictures with their dogs, but you know, so I'm sure there's stuff that women see us doing it. They're like, bro, that's stupid. You know? Yeah, y'all, you know. Uh, I am not afraid of ingesting microplastics from my water bottle now. I, people tell me about that all the time. I, and, and I possibly am ingesting thousands of micrograms of microplastics. Here's my thing. Um, every day, I am taking in all kinds of hurtful, harmful stuff. The world we live in now, the things we've done, pretty much everything is killing us. You know what I mean? I can only worry about so many. So I, I choose not to worry about the water bottle. If, if microplastics kill me, that's what got me. Something's going to kill me. It'll be the water bottles or it'll be the food or it'll be a, a you know, a dump truck. I don't like something's going to kill me. So like I just can't go through life worrying about all of them, you know, and, and most of us don't. We just pick a few and we worry about them. So that's just not one of the few I worry about, you know. Go on Tinder's comfort zone. Chris, I probably really rack up. Yeah, Kendra, that's when I learned. I'm very lazy. I don't like putting words in the profile, but I've learned I have to because women, they've told me. We actually read the profile. Here's the, here's the, here, let's, can we talk? <laughs> I believe this. Men are way more visual than women. You know what I mean? A, 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 we see a beautiful woman and our, our whole mind is done. I think women can see an attractive man and they're impressed is not the same from what I've seen. So men, we think, oh, I'm very visual. Let me just hit her with some very good visual pictures. I got her. But women are like, nah, I need something a little more. Like, I want to read about you. I'm trying to learn a little more about you. Yeah, you got a six pack, but I need to know. I need to feel something. Men, we don't need to feel nothing. We just need to see it. And then we try to feel it. Um, this is how we try to feel something. You know, but women kind of, I think, need a little more. And a lot of times on, yet, on profile sites, like dating sites, we just want to give you visual because that's what we care about. I read women's profiles because I know they like it. And when I message them, I want to throw something from the typically the bottom of the profile in there. Be like, oh, by the way, I saw you like Star Wars, you know, Star Trek's better, <laughs> you know, something like that. Like, I want her to know, oh, he read my profile because I know women appreciate that because I ask women. But I think a lot of dudes, they put the profile they would want to see. That's where we mess up. Men put the profile they would want to see. And so it's just like, oh, I'm going to give her the best. And it, women just like, bro, like, give me some words. I want to find out about you. What am I? That's my, what I've kind of gleaned. Uh, Fisky, I never mentioned my YouTube channel on my profile. Um, I think in one of them, I put down like making videos or something, but I never mentioned YouTube. I don't want anybody to know. Like YouTube is not something that like I'm trying to tell people. Because it puts me at a total disadvantage in dating. And this is another reason. This might sound crazy. crazy. This is enough. YouTube is another reason I don't really be out there trying to date as much. Because as soon as she says, what do you do for a living? These days, I have to say content creation. I got a YouTube channel. She's going to be like, ooh, what's your YouTube channel? And then she has over a thousand videos and live streams to like if she was so inclined to learn about me and that puts me at a disadvantage when like I've only had one coffee date to learn about her. So, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like suddenly she knows all this stuff about me and like our, you know, it just has so much information. Information is power. You know what I mean? And I'm an honest person, so I'm not going to lie, but it's just like, it's weird knowing like, oh, this person knows a lot more about me. And I don't even know what she knows about me because I don't know what she watched. So like, that's a weird dynamic to start dating. So like, I don't want nobody to know how to do YouTube. Abby, how's it going? I'm a producer, put I'm a, well, yeah, I can put I'm a producer, but when we meet, she's gonna be like, so what do you produce? 
You know what I mean? It's all going to come back to, yeah, it's an occupational hazard, but it's one it, warning about to be another YouTuber crying about how hard it is. Um, it's one of those things you just don't think about until you start doing it. You're like, oh, wait, what do I tell people I do? You know what I mean? It's, it's just a weird kind of thing. Give me one second, folks. I'm going to be right, right back. We back. <laughs> Door to, no, 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 that was just bathroom break. All right, I got fried chicken for dinner. Uh, Lola, I, I made the bed. Okay, I made, you see that? I made, I remade the bed. That was me. I told y'all. That's what I do, bro. That one pillow right there is, this, this pillow is a little wonky. I'm not happy with this pillow. I can, that's, I'm not happy with that pillow. But yeah, that, that was me. I, already, I tell y'all, I'm not gonna make a bed, bro. You can bounce a quarter off that bed. I told y'all. Told y'all. Yeah, Gregory, you smarter than me. Cause you know, I didn't think about it. You know, even little stuff that like, someone might be like, well, I don't really want to date him because he's gonna be, be putting my business all over the internet. You know, yeah, I didn't think about all that. 1984. I'm in, I'm in Portland, Portland, Oregon these days. Why do I have room markers on my wall? Oh, that's just the the the. That's just the wallpaper. That's just the way the room set up. This is part of the reason I booked it. I had seen this hotel. Me, me and my buddy walked by it the other day. And I, I was like, that's a cool looking hotel. And then when I was on booking, I saw that like how cool it looked inside. And I was like, well, I want to stay there. Yeah, my I mean, yeah, it's the same with social media. The uh the the difference with social media though is like you can shut it down, which I can shut YouTube down, but like when it's paying the bills. You know what I mean? So yeah, social media, if it got weird, you can be like, yeah, I'm, I'm deleting it. But it's like, when it's paying the bills, it's hard to shut it down, you know? So it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's different. Have I seen any interesting things in Portland? Um, I mean, there's been some interesting people, but I haven't really got out of the house much. It, it seems like a very friendly vibe. I do like and I don't mean this negatively. I see a lot of character. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's a lot of people living their true self. And, you know, you ever been somewhere and people pretty much all look the same? Portland, there's just a lot of character within the people, I've noticed. You know? You thought maybe I was in a hallway? Okay, there's a bed in the hallway? Um... Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. I do. I clean it. I make, I make a thing, bro. Like, who makes the, who remakes their bed? Like, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ellie. And I appreciate what you said about wisdom. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's been, it's been in the 40s. Sixer. It's been in the 40s, but it's been rainy, so overcast. I'm like in Oregon so far. Um, uh, once again, once it stops, Raining every day, I want to get out and explore more. So that bed is comfortable. It's a nice hotel, man. I like the comfy bed. The the fridge could be bigger, and I think you have to request a microwave. Other than that, it's cool. Super nice, you know. 
employees here. I had two. I had two big bags, like like this, well, like the brown paper bag, you know, of, of like DoorDash leftovers, and and I was walking up the hallway and asked the housekeeper, I'm like, is there a trash can? And she took them, and you know, it's super nice people I like it. I don't have how no, I got the D D on the door. I had to go find the housekeeper. I don't have a housekeeper. That's that bro. I am a housekeeper, so I can make the bed just as good or better than the housekeepers. So why would I have anybody come in and anyway? That's one. Oh yeah, Ted, I know all about short sheeting. <laughs> I don't I, as a as a good housekeeper, I don't do it. But yeah, we're about short shooting. What up, Jessica? How you doing? Yeah, do not disturb. Yes, yes. I always forget. Like that's literally. I always forget that like everybody doesn't know what D and D means. Because that's you know. Yeah, so I put I have the do not disturb sign on the door. Because like what why would I need someone to clean up after me like every day? Yeah. You know, when I'm working at hotels, you know, I do it for other people, but for me, I'm like, you know, what, what do I need people to clean? You know, if I want something, I just go be like, hey, can I have some towels, please? The old Kendrick yeah, jumping on the bed is a I don't even like people to sit on the bed, you know? Nah, don't <laughs> I just remade that bed. That's what chairs are for. What up, DT? Yeah, we, we've been going for a minute. It's kind of the tail end. Yeah, some, some hotels don't have microwaves in every room. So actually quite a few hotels don't have microwaves in every room. So yeah, you got to request a microwave, which I get it. I get it. it. The average person won't request one. So you're you're putting out 10 microwaves a night instead of you know, there being a hundred of them every night. So I get it. I get it. Uh, no, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, I don't think. No. Taylor, how you doing? Kids have TAs, teacher's assistants, to help shy introverted kids become more social. I'm sure that's a grief, which is helpful. Just an interesting world. I mean... If, if you're like, I think there's a lot of people who are shy, who would love to be more outgoing and they kind of are helped by that help. You know what I mean? Help by having someone come along and help them. So I, I like that. I like that. Um, because yeah, some you know, you can just be shy. You're like, you might be the, you, we all know the shy kid that once you start talking to him, he'd never shut up. You're like, dang, I like Jason better when he didn't talk. You know, but so yeah, I think sometimes just having someone to introduce you to other people can be helpful. You see wrinkles on the side of the bed? Oh yeah, I mean it it could be tighter. Like I can fix that. Watch me. All you gotta do is come right here. See that? See that? All you gotta do is boom. You see that? You see that? Hmm? You see that? Hmm? 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 You see? Which if I was actually making this bed that part right there would be fixed too. But you see how quick they work? I, I don't do much, but I can make a bed. I can make a mean bed. Sounds like the hood, you cheap, bruh, 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 okay. You're right, this the, okay. You see the sights, you see the, what is that, a 20 story high rise not your next door, okay. Okay, this for the. Okay. Do I have an interchangeable wardrobe? No, I just I don't. I'm, what's what's an interchangeable wardrobe? I think that I obviously don't have one because I don't know what it means. Um, I got a pair of jeans. I got three pairs of like khakis and I got this shirt and another button down and like five t-shirts. I think that's it. 
<laughs> Billy said, that's what I want in. Facts. Oh, every item in my wardrobe definitely doesn't go together. No, I don't, I don't buy stuff based on that. I just buy it if I like it. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff that didn't go together, but I just wear the same stuff over and over again. So yeah, I just wear the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, I mean, it's, I uh, think, and then this is it right here, folks. This is, this is it. I do got a jacket and some stuff on the other wall, but that's pretty much it. You know, that's, you know, it all, you know, we got, we got much, but I just wear the same stuff over and over again. You know, if I find a, like, I'll wear this shirt with my jeans and say I wore it today and I didn't do much, I might wear it again tomorrow. Like, nobody sees me, you know? Oh, mud. Yeah, you know we put hospital corners on the bed. That's that's without a doubt. You know it's... I'm moving this. You know, you know it's hospital corners. You know it's hospital corners. We don't... I wouldn't even know how to make the bed otherwise. Less clothing is definitely freeing together. Totally. Like I, I just, like I said, I, and once you, here's the thing, like once you get used to having less clothing, you start to realize you could have even less clothing. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I said, once I realized, oh, if I'm not going to work or if I'm not going to a, a function, no one, and, and, and I don't, and, and the clothes don't get musty or dirty or anything. Why can't I wear the same thing three days in a row? You know what I mean? Like once you realize that, it's like, oh, I don't really need. I could have two pairs of pants and three shirts and be fine. You know, you wear them for a week or two and what? Like, you know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, it's just like, oh, I don't really need all them clothes. The Batman shirts, did I keep my, I might have thrown my Batman shirt away. I think I threw my Batman shirt away. I need to buy a new one. What up, Andrew? Oh, he's actually nobody sees me. No one sees me. Thank you, buddy. Hope you have a blessed uh, day as well. Yeah, nobody like nobody see. And even did someone see did see me? Where they were like, Tim, you wearing the same shirt two days in a row? Yes. End of conversation. Like, what are they gonna laugh at me? Okay, like it's once you get over the I need to be wearing a different outfit every single day, it doesn't bother. Yeah, I'm, I that is one thing with the socks. As soon as I get a hole, I throw them away. I used to, yeah, whatever, but now I'm like, now I like to have good socks on. Yeah. Taking clothes to the Salvation Army. Respect, respect. Gregory, hey, yeah, that Jack Reacher passport, toothbrush, clothes on your back, maybe a couple dollars, you know, your debit card. You know, it's possible. Uh, Jamie, yeah, companion would be nice if I found the. What are the, all these birds? There's like flocks of birds. It's kind of weird in the city, right? Um, yeah, a companion would be nice. It's just a matter of finding her, you know, her finding me, me finding her, you know. But like there's sacrifices I'll have to make when I start dating again. And honestly, some of them I don't know if I'm ready to make. Like she might be like, you can't wear the same shirt two days in a row. <laughs> you know, what I mean? just different stuff that like I live a very free lifestyle. And I can pretty much do whatever I can. I want to do. It's just a matter of can I do it? Can I afford to do it? You start dating, then you got to bring somebody else in the mix, and you can't do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. Things are more expensive because now you got to pay for two. You know what I mean? So like, I would love to meet someone that I cared about enough that I'd be willing to make those sacrifices. You know, so like that's those are the conversations I have. Instead of it just being like, oh, man, I can't wait to meet somebody. It's like, oh, are you really ready 
to date again. You know, I've, there's days where all I do is watch women's sports, literally wake up, watch baseball, go right into basket. You may like literally soccer in the literally. That's all I do. Don't know if you can do that if you're dating and she calls and wants to talk or wants to come up. You mean like it's sacrifices, sacrifices. And, and I think no matter how much you care about somebody, there will be sacrifices in a relationship. Even if someone lets you be you and do what you want to do 90% of the time, there's going to be that 10%, um, I think. Because I'm very do what you want to do. But I'm sure there'll be things I'll be like, yeah, with her. You know what I mean? That's part of it. But I'm like, am I, am I there yet? You know? Then maybe. I think, I, think I'll know I'm, I think I'll know I'm there when I meet the person I'm there with it with. When I'm like, man, she, yeah, I'm willing to. A lot of this stuff could switch up. I'll be right at the store buying new shirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DT, if, if you're the type of person who doesn't want to limit yourself to one person, cool. There's no rules. Um, I just been there, done that. So like, if I'm going to get close to somebody like that, it, it's going to be just one person and it's going to be that because that's what I want now at this stage of my life. But yeah, when I was younger, whatever. Um, but yeah, now it's like, I don't, you know, my ultimate goal in life. live, you know, help others. I don't, you know, I don't know if I have an ultimate goal. Um, I'm here and I'm living and I got goals, but I don't know if I have an ultimate goal. Um, just like, I don't think I have a certain purpose. Uh, you know, I'm here and I'm living and I want to see places. I want to do stuff. I want to spread joy, spread love, help my fellow man. But I don't know if I have an ultimate goal. Um, I don't know in my life, if I can all narrow it down to one thing. Good morning, Linda. Mud, I don't have any holy draws, so I don't, I don't, my draws don't get holy. Uh, if they did, yeah, throw them away. Like, like, I don't have much, but it's good. You know what I mean? Tim in the past, you know, where, until, but like, I don't have much now, but it's good. Cause I'll just, I, I'll just throw it away and get something new. Cause I don't have to, like, we only have like eight shirts. It ain't nothing to throw a shirt away. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, we, we good. We good. We good. Hey Jude, I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. I'm I'm appreciate you you saying that. Like that's like I said, I, I want to help people. If if you could if, if when I when I hit tune, if people are like, yeah, that, that Tim guy, he did help a lot of people. As people have graciously already said, I'm good. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of times like, bro, they can take me tomorrow, bro. Like I'm I'm good, you know. I feel like I've done some cool stuff, I've helped some people. Spread love, receive love, received help. Like, I feel like I've been a decent human. You know what I mean? Like, there's some stuff that I'll be like, oh, I didn't make it to Japan, or oh, you know what I mean? But like, I, I don't feel like I, I don't walk around with just like a sense of, you know what I mean? It's just not nah, just gotta get from womb to tomb. And while I'm doing it, let's try to do some cool stuff. But you know, I, you know, like, I, it's just not a. I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. I feel like a lot of us societies put pressure on us. What's to this? What are you doing? What are you? No, I'm, you know. I, what up, Journey? I do believe manif manifestation, DT. I do believe God is good. Yes. Um, I think it comes down to focus. What you focus on, you draw towards yourself. What you focus on, you go towards. It's like when you're driving a car. If you start looking that way, the car goes that way. You know, same kind of deal. With I think sometimes we try to shroud manifestation in this. The secret, but no, nah, it's just like what you focus on in life, you go after. Not to mention, you focus on it, you're telling God, you're telling the universe, I really want that. And I think the universe, God, is really 
wants us to have what we want, you know? So I believe in that. Oh, yeah, I know you. Yeah, mud. I got you. I got you. I know you. Womb to tomb. Um, I'm my fear of death is greatly decreased. I think I still have some, you know, um, apprehension about death, but it's nothing like it used to be. And I don't think I'm really scared of it. You know, I'm a little nervous about the actual dying, but I'm getting a lot more at peace with death. Um, like I said, it's, it's coming. So like it don't, it, I, I've known since I understood what death was that I was going to die one day. So like, why worry about it? Like, you know, I don't think I believe in an actual being that's the devil. And I say that because I go long periods of time without thinking about the devil. Like someone else has to bring it up. They go, oh, the devil's a lie. And I'll be like, I forgot there was supposedly a devil. You know, I'm, I'm big on this. And I, and I think about this when it comes to spirituality and everything. Um, if I had just been born on this earth and hadn't heard about religions and all this other stuff, if I had been born into nature, how the world was before, what like what what would my spirituality look like then? Because there's a lot of concepts that I don't think would naturally come about. You know, I I just don't think nature would lend itself to me thinking there's a devil, right? Like what in nature? If I grew up in nature in the mountains and hunter gatherer or something like that, what about that would ever say there is a creature called the devil that does bad stuff and wants you to do bad stuff. There's nothing in nature that says devil. So like th that's kind of what I, I'm starting to base a lot of, you know, like, do I believe in that? I'm like, would nature, would nature have taught me that? The things I believe about God, nature, I feel like it's taught me that. I would, I think I would just naturally believe there was a higher presence. I don't think I would naturally believe there was a bad man or bad thing. You know, like I think I would be more inclined to believe bad happens and there are some people who do evil stuff. But I don't think I would like, oh, there's a bad entity guiding all these people. Because that just seems weird. You know what I mean? So why aren't, why aren't the trees evil? Why does the devil just affect humans? If the devil's the ultimate evil, why don't he affect the trees? Why aren't the animals? You know what I mean? Like, what's the, it just comes for us. Okay. Why the grass ain't evil? You know, these, these, these are questions. I, I Once again, you, I have to think these things through. Like, the older I get, the less people can just tell me something's real. I'm like, wait a second. Well, what about this? <laughs> I can't just... And I'm a firm believer that the source, God, wants us to know the truth. So I know a lot of people, and I used to be too, because I was raised in a certain religion, and I, I I was taught to believe that certain stuff, if you ask or question, was wrong. But I'm like, I don't think God is afraid of us finding out the truth. So we have to ask these questions and investigate and get to a point where I believe it to be my truth. And You know what I mean? Why would it be wrong to question? Because in the questioning, I figure out what is really true. You know, so that's why, like, I'm like, I'm not afraid to ask these questions. You know, because that's how I figure out what works for me. You know, so that was a good question. That was a good question. I don't think I, I don't know if I've said that on camera before. I might have. I've, I've got lots of videos and streams, but I don't know if I said that on camera before. You know, 
I've been mulling that one over my head for a while. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to jump off um, going on like two and a half hours. You know, so I think that's a good stream. Um, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate y'all being here, sticking around with your boy. We had some really good conversation. Love the introvert talk. Um, big shout out to the Super Chat squad. They came through. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support so much. A lot of people have been, um, you know, throwing some cash apps and, and PayPal donations as well. So thank y'all for that as well. That's Super Chat Squad, too, so thank y'all for that. Um, I, I might, what's tomorrow? I might shoot a video tomorrow, but I'll, I'm sure if not tomorrow, Saturday, come back on. Um, I want to do a sobriety stream soon, so maybe Saturday or maybe tomorrow night. But anyway, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all so much for being here. Big shout-out to Angela um, for, for, for moderating. Thank you so much. Um, shout-out to the, the thumbs-uppers, the usual suspects, the lurkers, lurk mob, lurk squad, everybody. I love each and every one of y'all. Stay blessed. Talk to y'all soon.